The two problems in this video are going to be looking at electric flux through a surface, but it's going to be a surface where there is a charge that's enclosed. And so it's going to be looking at the flux through the closed surface and using it with Gauss's law to find out how much charge is enclosed. Again, Gauss's law tells us that the net flux through a closed surface equals the enclosed charge divided by epsilon zero. So this first problem has an electric field that's pointing downward, but it has a strength E at the top surface of this cube, and it has a strength of 2E at the bottom surface of this cube. So it's a cubic box of sides A. First of all, there's no flux that's through the front, the back, the left, or the right side. Since the electric field is straight down, no electric field is passing through the four sides of the box. There's only flux through the top and the bottom. Again, electric flux is electric field dotted with the area vector. For the four side faces of the cube, the area vector is perpendicular to the electric field, or the electric field is parallel to the surface. Again, the area vectors are perpendicular to the surfaces. So the flux through each one of those four surfaces is zero. So this means that we need to find the flux in through the top and the flux out through the bottom. And the convention with flux is electric flux is pointing into a surface. So field lines that are going into a closed surface have negative flux and field lines that are coming out of a surface have positive flux. So there's a negative flux in through the top and there's a positive flux out through the bottom. Electric flux is electric field times area. If the electric field is perpendicular to the surface or parallel to the area vector. And so through the top, the negative electric flux is going to be the strength of the electric field E times the area of the top, which is a squared, the side of the cube squared. So the electric flux through the top is negative E times A squared. The flux through the bottom is going to be positive, and it's the electric field strength, which is 2E, times the area of the bottom, which is also A squared. So the electric flux through the bottom is positive 2E times A squared. And so the net flux is going to be positive 2E A squared plus negative E A squared plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero for the four sides. And that gives us that the net flux through that cube is positive E times A squared. So then to find the charge inside the box, we need to use Gauss's law, that the net flux, which is positive E times A squared, equals the enclosed charge inside the box divided by epsilon zero. So plugging in the values, the net electric flux is E times A squared, and that equals the charge, capital Q, that we're looking for, divided by epsilon zero, or Q, equals epsilon zero times E times A squared. And that charge that's enclosed is positive because the net flux through that box is positive. Again, field lines point away from positive charges and towards negative charges. And so if there's overall a net electric flux coming out of the box, that means that overall there was a net positive charge, which is creating electric field lines that pointed away from the charge itself. This is a basic application of Gauss's law, trying to relate the flux through a closed surface to the charge that's enclosed by the surface and looking at that relationship. If we know the flux, being able to find the charge that's enclosed, or if we know the charge that's enclosed, we can calculate the flux through the surface. The second problem is going to be very similar to the first, except the electric field is a little bit more complicated and we're actually given values to plug in. So we're told that we have an electric field that's given by the equation 2xi hat 
minus 3 j hat. This is an electric field in unit vector notation, and it's saying that the x component of the electric field is 2x, so it changes as x changes, and the y component of the electric field is negative 3. The y component of the electric field is a constant value. It doesn't depend on the value of y. So at different values of x, we're going to have different strengths of the electric field, of the x component of the electric field. And so we plug in the value for x. So if x was 1, the x component would be 2. If x is 5, then the x component would be 2 times 5, or 10 newtons per coulomb. Here, we're going to be plugging in variables, but it's the same idea. We are going to be looking at the x or y components of the electric field to find the flux through each of the six faces of this cube. So we have this rectangular volume. The left side of it is a distance c along the x-axis. So the left side of it is at x equals c. The right side of it is at x equals a plus c. The top of the volume is at y equals b, the bottom is at y equals 0, the front side is at z equals a, and the back side is at z equals 0. So this rectangular volume has a length a, a width a, and a height b. So we're going to find the flux through the right surface, and then we're going to find the flux through each of the other five surfaces as well. So the outgoing flux through the right surface will be the x component of the electric field through the right surface. Again, it's only the component of the electric field that's perpendicular to the surface area. So the y component doesn't pass through that right side of the box, only the x component does. And so the flux through the right surface will be the x component of the electric field times the area of that right surface. The area of the right surface is just a times b. The electric field at the right surface is given by the equation e sub x equals 2x. But we said that x equaled a plus c at that right hand surface. So the x component of the electric field at the right surface is 2 times a plus c. So the outgoing flux through the right surface is going to be positive because it's pointing outwards, and it's going to be the electric field 2 times the quantity a plus c times the area, which is a b. Again, it's outward, which makes it positive. The electric field was 2 times the quantity a plus c, and the area was a times b. The flux through the left-hand surface is going to be very similar. x at the left surface is c. The left side is a distance c along the x-axis. So e sub x at the left surface is 2 times c. So the flux through that left surface is going to be negative because the electric field is pointing to the right, which is pointing into the rectangular volume. And so the electric flux will be negative, and it'll be the electric field 2C times the area AB. So we have a negative flux because it's into the volume. The electric field strength was 2 times C, and the area of that left side was, again, a times b, the same as the area of the right side. Next we're going to talk about the flux through the top and through the bottom. So the top and the bottom both have dimensions of a times a. So the area of the top and the area of the bottom is a squared. And the electric field that we care about for the top and the bottom is the y component of the electric field. Again, the x component of the electric field does not pass through the top surface, it does not pass through the bottom surface. It's only the y component of the electric field that passes through the top or the bottom. The y component of the electric field is a constant negative 3 newtons per coulomb. It is pointing downwards and it has a constant value of negative 3 newtons per coulomb. So the electric field through the top is downward 3 newtons per coulomb. The electric field through the bottom is downward 3 
newtons per coulomb. The downward electric field means that the field is pointing into the volume through the top. So the top has a negative flux through it, and the electric field is pointing out of the volume at the bottom. So the flux at the bottom is going to be positive. So the flux through the top is negative 3 times a squared. It's negative because it's pointing into the volume. The electric field strength is 3 newtons per coulomb, and the area is a squared. And the flux through the bottom is the same, but positive. It's positive 3a squared. Again, the electric field in the y direction didn't change. So every electric field line that came in through the top also passed out through the bottom. So the flux through the bottom surface was positive 3a squared. The flux through the front surface or the back surface will both be zero because there's no electric field along the z-axis. The electric field in the x-direction does not pass through the front or the back surface. The electric field in the y-direction does not pass through the front or the back surface. And there's no electric field in the z-direction. So there's no flux through the front or the back surface. Again, the electric flux through the front and the electric flux through the back are both zero because no electric field is passing through the front or the back. And so now this allows us to find the net flux through this box. We would take the flux through the right side, and we would add the flux through the left side, and then we would add the flux through the top, and then the flux through the bottom, and then the flux through the front and the back. So we need to add each of those six electric fluxes together. The flux through the right side was positive 2 times the quantity A plus C times AB. The flux through the left side was negative 2 times C times A times B. The flux through the top was negative 3A squared. The flux through the bottom was positive 3A squared. And then the flux through the front and the back were each zero. The flux through the top and the bottom add up to zero. Every field line that came in through the top went out through the bottom. So all we have to do is look at the flux through the right, which is positive, plus the flux through the left, which is negative. And if we're given values for A, B, and C, if we're told that A equals 3.36 meters, B equals 8.4 meters, and C equals 22.2 .2 meters, we can calculate the charge that was enclosed within the volume. This net flux that we calculated is going to equal the enclosed charge divided by epsilon zero. Epsilon zero, another name for it, is the permittivity of free space. The value for epsilon zero is 8.85419 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. So if we plug in the values for A, B, and C, we can get the net flux. So we have 2 times A plus C times AB. So that's 2 times 3.36 plus 22.2 .2 times 3.36 times 8.4 plus negative 2 times C times A times B. So that's negative 2 times 22.2 .2 meters, times 3.36 meters, times 8.4 meters. And that's going to equal Q enclosed over epsilon zero. So that positive flux is positive 1,442.811. The negative flux is negative 1,253.146. And that equals the enclosed charge divided by epsilon zero, 8.85419 times 10 to the negative 12. We're adding the positive flux and the negative flux together. I get positive 189.665 newton meter squared per coulomb. And that equals Q enclosed over epsilon zero. And finally, to solve for the enclosed charge, I multiply both sides by epsilon zero. And we get that the enclosed charge is positive 1.6793 times 10 to the negative nine coulombs. Again, this problem is fairly similar to the first problem that we looked at, where the electric field at the top of the box was E, the electric field at the bottom of the box was 2E, and we solved for the enclosed charge. Here, we had something that was a little bit more complicated. We had to look at how the electric field changed as a function of 
the position, and then we were given numerical values, and we used that to solve for the charge that was enclosed.